to make sure that I brought in an opportunity for you all to ask your questions where we can share on the latest topics and trends that are happening in real estate. So say hi, say hello, how are you? And thank you for joining me today. So today's topic is Ultra FICO. Will it help more consumers gain credit approvals. Let's see who's on. Blessed Pearson, thanks for joining in. Make sure those of you who are joining in say hi, hello, drop your city and state. This is going to be one of those shows that is going to be interactive. You get to dialogue with me, with our other community folks who are going to chime in and bring, you know, bring it to the front line. Let's talk about it. Let's create that space and community. 
Uh, let me just do this because I know for yesterday's show, I had an issue with sound. So let me just make sure you can hear me. Talk about it. Wonderful. <laughs> yes, I can be heard. So great. Let's talk about, um, let me stop the scrolling here that's happening uh, and just control, do it as a title and boom. Here we go. So there has been this latest release that happened um, in this last couple days, actually. And I am seeing a lot of different articles, blogs, news posts that are talking about the new ultra, ultra FICO score. So the new ultra FICO score is referring to a new way of credit scoring. Uh, and this actually, I wanted to see if, um, I did say we would do a poll actually on this new show. So let's do a poll if you, um, we wanna measure some, just some basics knowledge. So uh, do we have, I'm going to come back to that because um, I wanted to ask. So let's first talk about the cre three credit bureau agencies, right? Um, are you familiar with where you can access a free copy of your credit report? So let's do that now. Um, where can you get can you get a free? copy of your federal, of your credit report. It is federally mandated, federally mandated. So um, I got some, do you know where, do you know where to get the um, credit report? Here's what's really cool, you guys. I'm, <laughs> we're almost done with the online school and this is really gonna be fun. And this is exactly what we are teaching the youth. All right. So where do you get a free copy of your credit report? Since we're talking about credit. Now, Lisa, let me give you the disclaimer. Lisa's not a credit expert. Um, that's not what I do. I am a real estate professional and I'm licensed in California. And hey, Angelo, thanks for chiming in. And what that means is I'm privy to getting connected with industry professionals uh, that work on credit profiles that are credit consultants. I, know, I don't so much work with credit repair people. Uh, I do work with lender professionals that assist with credit profiles because uh, the name of the game is if you don't have, look, if you don't have a means to getting a, a, a loan through your credit, then you are pretty much not going unless you're buying cash okay right and there are many there's one, more than one ways to skin a cat i just don't want to get into a debate with people on you know oh we can do this i can do this and and be able to purchase a house yeah we, i get that yeah there's tons of ways so i'm not knocking it what i'm talking about is for your average regular folks who work nine to five who are savings who are trying to figure out all the financial sense of all this information that's putting put out on the World Wide Web. Let me say this, um, Credit Karma is not what lenders use. That's great for you to monitor who is spending, um, your spending and how you're using credit. But lender professionals, those who are running your credit for a mortgage, they're not using Credit Karma. They use a different scoring system. All right, so um, where can you get a free copy of your credit report? And this is one of those things that, oh, let me read off the, of the option because I do know that people are listening and chiming in to me on the radio podcast. So where can you get a copy, get a free copy of your credit report? Do know this is federally mandated. You are able to get this 
once a year. So my options are, you can get it at creditreport.com, you can get it at credit.com or annualcreditreport.com. I threw out a poll for those of you who are listening, uh, what would your options be? Make sure you, if you join in the chat, uh, drop your city and state. I want, want to know where you're from. Yes, where are you from? So this is the first time I'm using the poll because I wanted to do something different with today's show. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to integrate Q&As in between the show where we can just build and ask questions together and we can learn together because I've noticed I'm now in my second season. I'm now at like 50 some episodes and I've given a lot of information and I would love for you to now share with me. Let's build, let's create a conversation where we are connecting, building and sharing together. Because if I'm just doing it one way and you're getting all this content, all this information, I don't know what's sticking. And I wanna give you the opportunity to have a voice to ask me the questions, refer to the guests, you know, on past episodes, and so that we can continue to create a community together. So, all right, I'm gonna close out this poll. Let's see if I know how to close the poll out though, because <laughs> this is a new feature. Um, I think if you're on, you can swipe, there's a way to swipe and you can test the poll, but essentially the answer is, at annualcreditreport.com. Oh, I love this. So Stephen Bray says, um, <laughs> he says, I'm an old white guy from Cape Breton Island, Canada. Yes, I remember. I remember your picture, actually. He says, we friended years ago over our love for human rights. I still have you as a friend and I've enjoyed watching you ever since. I love watching you. I have a house for sale. If anybody's interested in becoming Canadian, go go to Google Earth and type in 229 South so and so and so and go to Street View. Okay, great. So there you go. You've got uh, property on the market and he is in Canada. So thanks for chiming in. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> so let me see. Let me close out the um, let me close out the poll because I don't really it's a new thing that I'm learning this poll. So the answer again is and I don't know, Stephen, if you knew the answer where you can connect, um, where you can get access to your free credit report, because there's tons of websites, but there's one that's actually federally mandated. And the answer is you can get it at annualcreditreport.com. So I'm going to type that in here, creditreport.com. And you are allowed to make sure you're allowed to check your credit for free from all three credit bureaus, right? All three credit bureaus. What are all the three credit bureaus? Let me uh, get rid of the poll. We're good there. Uh, the three credit bureau agencies are Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. These are third-party agencies that vendors and companies are reporting your information uh, to, and they are collectively creating a scoring system um, uh, called your FICO. Your FICO is your credit score ranging from a low zero to nothing all the way up to high 850. So through life events, life happens. And we see, we have seen through the financial housing crises that there has been huge disruption in um, our financial economy or the state of our fin financial economy. And one of the things that I like to share and introduce with our uh, students, our members, our participants, and I'm sharing this with you is that when life hits, it will impact your finances. So Stephen, yeah, we can definitely build offline on that if you'd like. I definitely um, do have some referral partners and I do have contacts in Canada. So yeah, um, let's see what we can do to help. And as you bring up a great point, it was almost a great segue into what I was just going to talk about life events trigger us to have a real estate need. So while you are currently having a life event, you have now a real estate need where you're selling your property. So 
Exactly. Even when we have um, various life events in terms of injuries, job loss, divorce, new marriage, new baby, death. Um, did I mention new job or yeah, job and it creates relocation. So all these things impact a real estate need and depending where you are in those scenarios can impact your ability to continue to pay for your housing, pay for the bills, pay for um, credit cards and so forth and so forth. So it's one of those things, credit is one of those things that is a measure of, and a measure and a snapshot of how you are doing on this course in life we call money management. And so what I'm sharing with you is exactly how I share it with the youth so that they can understand, so they can understand how in life there is a report card called your credit report, and that's measuring you. So one of those, one of those things um, as we have seen over the course of, uh, over the past years, really over now the decade, it's been a decade since the housing crisis. And that has really put everyone into a financial strain. And I shouldn't say everyone actually, because there are people in this, in this world that have never experienced a recession, that have never experienced a great depression. So I'm not gonna put everyone in that, um, in that uh, uh, category. But for the most part, there are, there are those of us who experienced life events um, that impacted our ability to manage our finances and therefore maintain a well or high credit score. So one of the things that as we talk about the new ultra FICO, what this has done now, it's saying, you know what, hey, uh, we have, and I guess this is the FICO scoring system. Well, it's not we. I would say the companies, those who are seeking to issue new new loans. I and mean, let me say this, why this is a huge thing. New loans, um, new loans create new money. New loans create new money. However, because we don't have that many consumers applying for credit. And I, I have my own thoughts about this and I love to hear your thought about this. Uh, one of the things is because we have certain disruptors in the industry that really shifted that. And I'll say PayPal was one huge disruptor with shifting how people were now spending and um, how people were now uh, creating, um, people were now creating bank accounts or banking per se, or not banking because people had figured out a way to transact money, transfer to and from for products and services or from family to friends. And it was interesting that there wasn't a huge, they weren't relying hugely on credit. PayPal now offers credit approvals, right? Because they have been measuring and that's based on your transaction history. So this is all what we're talking about, that the ultra FICO system wants to factor in your transaction history via your bank accounts. And they're saying you get to choose which account. So obviously you're not going to choose the account that um, you've had overdrawn uh, amount or NSF, right? Not non-sufficient funds or you have late fees and when they're, not, they're not overdue fees. You're not gonna pick that count for them to create the score from or track your, tr your transaction history. They are wanting to give you the ability to, um, to improve your score by choosing the account that sheds a positive light, a positive financial transaction history light for you. So it's now switching third party uh, vendors and companies reporting your history. They're now saying, we're gonna put the power in the consumer. They get to decide what transaction history we will factor in for their credit score. Now, one of the things they said, um, one of the things that I've seen offline is that people have said that this is a trap right? Some people said, this is a little intrusive now into my bank account. 
again, I'm sure this is something that you, I shouldn't say I'm sure, I don't know the full details, um, but again, they're looking for a way so that applicants who have fallen short in getting uh, approvals can now use their checking accounts or their savings account or their money market accounts. Um, so let me know what are your thoughts. So I wanna share an article from, let's see, uh, I'm gonna reference Tom McParkland who did a post and he said that, uh, for example, on car loans, um, he says, Oh, wait, I, I want to do the Wall Street Journal one. He says, from the Wall Street Journal, the FICO said about 7 million ap applicants who have low credit scores as a result of thin borrowing histories would likely see their scores improve under the new system. Millions of applicants. He says, separately, some 26 million subprime borrowers will end up with higher credit scores. FICO said, with nearly 4 million seeing an increase of at least 20 points. So, 20 points can make a huge difference, especially for those of you who are on the cusp. Um, when I say on the cusp for a mortgage application, a home loan application, there are programs that will allow you to come into uh, purchasing a property with your FICO score as low as 550. Um, you can do 500, anything below 580 right now, which is an acceptable FICO score that will allow you to purchase a property with 3.5% down. So I'll say that again. I'll say that slower. FICO score, if you have a FICO score at 580, at minimum 580, right? If that middle score is 580, you can purchase or invest in property using the FHA insured loan, which will allow you to buy up to one to four units with three and a half percent down. Okay. You can also purchase or invest in your first property using the FHA insured loan with FICO scores as low as 550. I'm not the lender, I have lender partners. So that makes me knowledgeable because I'm equipped with knowledgeable people. Make sure you have a, a winning team. So there are loan products that are available that will allow you to purchase with as low as 550 FICO score, but you have to put 10% down. So with 10% down, so weigh out the options. If we're now at 550 and we have a new ultra FICO system that says they anticipate you, it would boost your score an estimated 20 points. That brings you closer to that 580, which goes from the difference between putting 10% down versus 3.5% down. Mind you, with these programs, you will still have the private mortgage insurance, which I won't go into details on this episode, but you can definitely uh, chime in with me, send me an email, DM me at LA Super Agent on any of the social media platforms and drop a comment. And if you'd like to learn more about the private mortgage insurance and ways to get, get rid of it, right? Remove the PMI, then go ahead and connect with me and I will go over that. Uh, for today, we're just talking about the ultra FICO system. So, if we're talking about boosting 20 points and estimate 20 points, that means there are some things that will be done on your part with making sure that you can improve your credit history, um, the, uh, the amount of credit lines you have open and different ways that you can improve it. And this one is just gonna boost based on your, on your money, on your bank account your transaction history. So as I process this for myself, I know in my opinion, I was thinking, oh, that's intrusive, right? But guess what? If you're given the option to pick an account and I'm one who does not put all my money in one basket, I'm going to say this right now. Please diversify your bank accounts. Why? Because remember when the financial housing crisis happened? and the bank shut down, you couldn't access your money, please make sure that you have diversified accounts. I'm mattress money too. 
I do mattress money too. I have, you know, I have uh, not all my money I put into the account and I have money that I, I do um, share uh, or I split over various accounts. So I'm saying that, like for instance, I'll use myself as an example. To improve my credit score, I would probably use my money market account because I don't have that many transactions coming to and from that account. For you, for instance, savings account. A savings account is exactly that, the difference between a checking and a savings account. So you may want to use your savings account for something like this to improve your credit score because you You actually, if you have too many withdrawals from your savings account, same thing with the money market account, you only have a limited amount of um, transactions, withdrawals, debits, or checks that you can write from that account because it's not meant to be that type of account. Now, for those of you who only have a checking account, those are transactional. You're going to have transactions to and from, but re realize the FICO score, the FICO company who is creating the new ultra FICO is saying you get to choose which account you want to use. You get to use your bank account, your savings account, your checking account, or a money market account. So this is now empowering you to decide what account you want to use. And obviously use the account that's going to shed the, the best light, paint you in the best picture. And again, they're saying this can on estimate improve your score by about 20 points. So if I share that if for purchasing in, uh, your first property using the uh, three and a half percent down payment program, and I want to um, say thank you to LJ Walker for sharing. Thanks for sharing the video. Thanks for those of you who are chiming in and tuning in and commenting. Be sure to say hi, hello, and, and hail from what city and state you're tuning in from. Really appreciate that. And again, for those of you who are listening to the replay on the radio podcast, you know I love you. Shout out to our Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Anchor FM, Breaker, Stitcher Radio uh, listeners. I love you, love you, love you. So again, which one would you be using to improve your credit score? Obviously use the one that sheds you in the best light. Again, use this to your advantage. So this again is coming out in 2019. And I'm thinking this is definitely going to be a positive, right? Uh, one of the things when we hear about new scoring systems, right? We wanna make sure that um, it doesn't create a way. And this is a big concern I saw on Instagram. So shout out to uh, Coach Twilight, shout out to Keith. Uh, Keith mentioned this, they felt, you know, they felt they were opposed to this. They felt like it was, it was going to be a trap, you know. Um, good evening, Landscape Larry's in the building from Charlton, Char Charleston, South Carolina. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, one of the things that they were saying is they felt like it would be a trap. It would be a trap for low income people because they're saying that credit scores equate with low income, you know, high credit scores or managing your credit score equates with low income. So does that resonate with you? Do you feel like that's a true false? How do you feel about that? Um, are we, do you feel like this would help consumers with credit approvals? Does it matter where you are on the income bracket? They're saying those who are already in the poverty scale are, would possibly not benefit to this benefit from this because they already have low income where they're not, um, they don't have a savings account per se. They may not have that much income set aside and all their, you know, that paycheck to paycheck. So if you have transactions that um, are exceeding your, your expenses are exceeding your income. Yeah. You're not going to be a person that's going to sign up for this. You're not going to want to attach your bank account because it can create more damage than good. So it looks like you have an opportunity or the option now to decide versus right versus where we are now is that the companies that you are getting credit from, they have all the control on the reporting, which is why the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau was created. Let me take a sip. <laughs> 
This is why the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau was created, was to give a, a, an advantage or, or equal footing for consumers to dispute any challenges on the on their credit bureau, on their credit report, uh, because a lot of the power was held with the creditors. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau created a platform, and this was created during the Obama administration, was created and designed so that you had a voice to appeal or dispute or file complaints against those credit companies that you felt was not properly reporting your credit history or was not addressing any disputes you had on your credit profile. They were then given 30 days. Let me say this, if you're a homeowner or a property, property owner, the same stands with your mortgage company or your mortgage servicer. There's been a lot of complaints with mortgage servicers and they're the ones that are reporting your credit history. Stephen Bray says, the banks don't lend low income people in Canada, even though you might not owe any money, they don't look at your equity, only your ability to pay. I think for the most part, um, that's what the bottom line is, right? Banks are people who are loaning out money there are they're wanting to see can you pay it back um and that's a challenge thing when we talk about low income right that is definitely challenge challenging thing when we talk about low income because already they have just enough income to get by so how how do they get to improve um, one of the things that I want to shout out, I actually want to shout out Smart Money Cafe, Sean Rogers, host of Smart Money Cafe that I uh, co-host on his show. He's huge about being a super saver and he has smart money tips. Um, do check him out on YouTube, he has great short three to four minute videos on tips on paying yourself, keeping more of your money, creating an automatic savings plan whether you're low income or not. So we're shifting mindsets, right? Because there are people that with just the amount of income, they're able to still save. So I think what we're talking about is mindset and practices, right? Not living above your means. And, and I'm not negating the fact that when we talk about a low income and household income, that you know there are multiple you know people in a household that you have to maintain. So, Again, I want to shout out again to Smart Money Cafe for the smart money tips and um, listening to him over and over has made me create my own automatic savings plan, which is why I said for this, I probably use my money market account um, for this. Um, I also have been testing an app called uh, Stash App. I'm not I'm not an affiliate or I'm not, they're not a sponsor, but I'm, I'm also looking at different ways that different tools that are out there to help people grow their money or learn about stocks, learn about investing. I want to shout out also to um, Ever, Evan Jefferson. He's a financial coach. And these are people in my network that have been awesome about creating a savings plan, creating um, multiple income streams, right? Monetizing your gifts. So there's, as we talk about income, as we talk about credit, ways to improve getting loans, um, and, and then there, there's the school of thought, there's a school of people that there are ways to loan from each other. Um, I do that. I've given out loans to individuals where it's just from person to person, right? Um, where I will create, you know, if I have, not if, when I have a certain amount, I can loan out to an individual and charge a nominal, just a small nominal uh, interest for that. So there are different ways that you can do that. So it's not necessarily, you know, oftentimes relying on the large companies, you can start small as well. But as this relates to all the buzz right now, as people are talking about this ultra FICO, I'm trying to make sense of it. Again, I ask you, do you think it'll help the consumer with credit approvals? And what they're quoting, we're talking about millions of applicants. They're saying that are going, their credit scores are going to improve from this just by using their transaction history with their bank accounts. Again, they're saying you get to choose. You get to choose which bank accounts. And 
it is my recommendation, use the accounts that don't have overdraft fees. Use the accounts you don't have oopsies in, right? Use the account that puts you in the best light, in the best possible lighting, the best financial snapshot. So what else do we have? Um, let me go through again through this article. Again, there's there's tons of them. When I posted it over this weekend, it was just the newest release and it's created the newest buzz. Um, uh, one of the things that, uh, that I address, so let, just to recap as well, for those of you who joined in, I did share where you, where you can add, we did a poll where you can get your free copy of your federally mandated credit report. Did you know that you get a free copy every year that is federally mandated from all three credit bureaus, all three credit agencies? What are the three credit agencies? Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. You should be checking that just like you check anything else. So be sure if you haven't already, go and check your profile. Go and check your credit history. I've shared this on some of my past episodes that unbeknownst to me, someone um, took a, a, someone got an apartment in my name using my credit history. I mean, kudos for them, but I had no idea I, I was living off of Adams somewhere in Los Angeles. That wasn't my place of residence. So I had to dispute that. And again, visit annualcreditreport.com, again, where you can access all three of your credit profiles from the three credit reporting agencies. This is federally mandated once a year. And those of uh, those people who work one-on-one -on -one with me, who do the uh, quarterly check-ins, I do actually do offer one-on-one um, -on -one quarterly check-ins every quarter. It's to keep real estate on your mind. So if you're not quite ready to purchase, invest, and you're not ready to make, make those steps, I actually have a program that I do offer um, that when you sign up, I do offer a, a $350 credit towards your closing. So albeit you work with me or one of my teams, I do have a national network. So you work individually with me. And then when you're ready, depending what state you're in, I then connect you with my realtor partners uh, that I vetted that will assist you with your closing or your purchase. So I'm really excited about that because I've been working with a lot of students from the colleges who are not ready to purchase, but I do quarterly check-ins because it holds them accountable to keep keeping real estate on the forebrain, right? So you may have you may not have time to focus on all the real estate trends and updates and changes. For instance, something like this: those who work with me as a client. Um, they get all these updates in the one-on-one -on -one and things in my toolbox that I don't make available on any of the social media platforms anywhere. So you can definitely sign up with me on that. And that's exciting. That's really fun because um, you get to pick my brain, really. Uh, what else? Any other thoughts and comments and questions? I'll leave it to you to learn more. Um, what else you find? But again, Today's episode is a special segment that um, I'm doing Q&As now so that we can connect, build, and share. Uh, every time on the uh, when I release an episode, it's tons of information and content. And I just want to make sure that you're finding value, you're receiving value, that I give value, and you're receiving value. And I love to hear your feedbacks and comments. So if we don't have any more questions or thoughts, I'm going to get ready to close out. I'll give you a few minutes to uh, put your thoughts together. If you just wanna say thank you for doing today's episode, just drop a quick thumbs up. Let me know, say thank you, I really appreciate it. And like I said, um, you can check the replay. I'm gonna have this uploaded on the YouTube at LA Super Agent. Be sure to connect with me on all social media. And again, stay connected. This is the kind of information that we get to do every week. Thanks, Steven, State Lands, Landscape, Larry, who else joined it? LJ Walker, thank you for Dahlia, uh, Angelo. Really appreciate you guys tuning in and commenting. And this was fun. So make sure you tag, share, let somebody know what we're doing on the show. And again, I will see you next week on another powerful and amazing episode on Ready, Set, Real Estate. We're bringing scary 
of Counting with Marriott Martin Martinez. That's going to be a fun show. And this is a three-part series that we're doing as a bonus. See you guys.